Hello again, as you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is setting up roaming profiles in Windows Server 2012. So roaming profiles are one of those really cool pieces of functionality that far too few Windows Server administrators actually use. It's just, it's a really cool thing um, that for some reason, a lot of people don't think about. They don't think about implementing in their environment. So when we're talking about profiles, what we're talking about is we're talking about the sum total of settings, configurations, and files, and folders for a user account. So what files and folders are sitting in a My Documents folder? What files and folder are sitting on the desktop? How is the background setting configured? How is the screen saver configured? These are all the types of things that make up a profile. Now when you're normally dealing with profiles, you're dealing with the local profile. So you create a user account on the server, you sit down at one of the client computers, you log the user in, and from there they make all kinds of changes. That all gets stored locally in their user profile. So basically they sit there, they change the background, they, they do whatever they do. When they log in again, they see whatever it is they changed before. That's their profile. Well, the thing is, is what happens is if they log in at another computer on the network. So they log in at this computer, they make all those changes, they log out, then they sit down at another computer on the network. Well, if they only have local profiles, when they sit down at that other computer on the network, they are going to get a default configuration. So whatever the Windows default configuration is, you know, the Windows default background, they won't have any other files, they won't have any other folders, they won't have any other settings. Why? All of their profile information is stored locally on the computer that they logged into originally. Well, with what roaming profiles allows you to do is it allows you to share your profile so that whatever computer you log into on the network you will get the same profile. So if I sit down to this computer and I change the background, I log out, I sign into this computer, I will get the background setting that I configured over here. I will have all my files, I will have all my folders, I will have all my configurations. So what roaming profiles allows is it allows you sit down at any computer on the network and always be presented with your customized profile. So this is a really, really, really useful tool. The, the, the big place that roaming profiles are used is in things like call center environments where you truly have COG employees. So basically you have a lot of users. You may have a thousand users using computers, but they don't have a, uh, a, a, a set desk. They don't have a set assigned seat or computer. Basically the call center employees, they come in the door uh, at the beginning of the day, they sit down at the first available computer that's not occupied and they go to work. Well in that environment you want those users to always be able to get the same profile and you don't want to have to configure a thousand different computers. Well if you have a roaming profile, when the person sits down at this computer, they will be presented with your desktop, all their configuration settings, all of that. If they sit down at this other computer over here, they will get all their configurations, all of that. So basically your call center employees can sit down at any one of those 1,000 different computers and they will get their own customized profile. They can make modifications and when they sit down at a different computer, all of those changes will follow them. So the first reason you may use a roaming profile is one of those environments. The other reason a roaming profile can be very useful is when you are dealing with high power executives or very important employees. Again, our job as support engineers as, as support people is for maximum uptime. We always want our C-level executives computers to be working, right? If, if the C-level's executives computer is working, then they're making the company money, which helps us get paid. Well, there are some times when things like hard drives fail, motherboards fail. Basically, no matter what we do, computers crash. Well, with these C-level executives, again, you have to be thinking, 
what they deal with is worth a lot of money in any given day. So if they are down an hour or two, it may cost the company thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. Legitimately, I've seen this in the real world. So if that C-level executive, their computer crashes and they're not able to do their work, that is costing the, the company a lot of money. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you could simply hand them another computer and say, log into this computer, all your files and folders and everything will be there. I will fix your main computer and then get it back to you as soon as possible. Now the executive might be a little upset because they're not working on their, their favorite computer, but they can do all of their work now. All their files, their folders, their emails, their settings are right there. As soon as they log in, they've got it. So that's the power of the roaming profile. You can sit down at any computer and you get your profile. The important thing to remember about profiles though, as I said, is profiles make up the settings, the configurations, your files and folders. They don't make up applications. So Word, Outlook, PowerPoint, Angry Birds, whatever you have installed on your computer does not migrate as part of the profile. So if you sit down at a computer that has Word installed on it and you make a lot of documents, if you have a roaming profile, if you go to another computer that does not have Word installed, when you log in you will see all of your documents but you will not be able to open them up because you don't have Word installed. So one of the things to remember if you're going to be implementing roaming profiles is that you should come up with a default configuration for all of your computers. So especially in the corporate world, you'll see where corporations, they will buy like Office 2012 Professional Edition and install it on every single computer. The reason is, is then you have the set standard same applications on every single computer. So if you use logs into any computer they will know that they have the applications that they need. So basically what I'm going to be showing you how to do today is these roaming profiles they're really cool. So the way that I'm going to be showing you how to do the roaming profiles today is the age old way that we have been doing this since way back in NT 4.0 days. So you can now do roaming profiles through uh, GPOs or group policy objects but I'm going to show you today how to do it through the simple profile path. So essentially, when you're going to be creating these roaming profiles, the first thing that you need to do is you need to create a folder on the network that the computers will be able to access, and you need to share it with everyone with the read-write permission. So basically, you create the folder so that when users log in from these different computers, the computers will be able to access the folder. Then what we're going to do is in the user settings, we are going to change the, uh, the profile path to point to that folder. And then when we log in, our profile will be stored on that profile, uh, on that folder, so that no matter what computer you're sitting at, that profile will be accessible. So when you're going to be creating the profile folder, generally I will tell you, simply put it on whatever your Active Directory domain controller server is. So if you have one Active Directory domain controller, Simply put the profile folder on that server. If you're dealing with small environments or mid-sized environments, that is the easiest way to go. Now, if you're dealing with large environments, then you can put that profile folder on any file server on the network. So you may have some stupid, insane, like 50 terabyte, um, you know, sized file server somewhere so you can put the profile folder that shared profile folder on a different file server on the network but in general where we are now I would say simply put it on the Active Directory server. So with that let's go over to the computer now so I can show you how all this works because it really is like I say it's one of those really easy things to do that I think more people <laughs> more people should do if they knew about it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go and we need to share or make sure the profile folder is shared. So we go down to fold, uh, File Explorer. So I'm on the Windows 2012 server now. We go down to File Explorer. We go to Computer. We go to C Drive. So this is where I have created this Profiles folder. So see, Profiles. I created this folder and then I shared it out. Now let's make sure that it is in fact shared. So I'm going to right click the Profiles folder. I go to Share With. I go here to Specific People to see how it's shared. 
So you can see I've shared this, everyone has the read write permission. So basically anybody on the network will be able to access this profiles folder. Now when the individual profiles are created within the profiles folder, they will have more advanced security uh, set up on them by default so that people can't simply access them willy nilly. So, so don't worry about the security here with the everyone with the read write permission. And make, make sure basically you do share here. So we've got this profiles folder. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to server manager, then we're going to go to tools, then we're going to go to active directory users and computers. So if I click on active directory users and computers, this is the default place for when we're dealing with users. So we're going to the users folder and then what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to find a user profile that we want to change and make it a, a roaming profile. So I've already done this with user 3 to show you how this works. So all we need to do is we just double click on user 3. On user 3 when the properties opens up what we want to do is we want to go to the profile tab. And in the profile tab, we want to put in the profile path. So you'll see slash slash server name. So what is the name of the server where this information is stored? So this server is called server. The shared folder is called profiles. And then here you'll see it now says user three. What you need to type in though is percent username percent. So this is a system variable that will plug in whatever the username of the user is. If you don't want to run into any problems, the best thing to do here is type in percent username percent instead of the person's actual username. So you just put the UNC of the server, the folder, and percent username percent and then what you're going to do is you'll hit OK. Now once you have done that you have configured the roaming profile to always go back to that folder. Now what we can do is we can minimize here and we can see that I have two different Windows 8 computers. So I have uh, this kiosk computer that I use every once in a while and then just Windows 8 number two. Well what we're going to do is we're going to go to the kiosk computer first and we are going to log in. And so we're logging in as user 3 and when we log in as user 3 it is now going back to that, pro that profile folder and seeing what it should pull up. So if we go to the desktop we can see that we have this particular background here and I created a, a, a folder there before. So let's, let's do a couple of things. What I'll do is I'll create a couple of folders so just do like a test, just do a couple of tests so you can see this when we uh, will log in to a different computer. So we do test one and we do new folder test two and then we do new folder test three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change the background settings. We're going to personalize uh, background image, um, I don't know, let's turn it into th this flower here and do save changes and then exit out. So on this computer, the kiosk computer, this computer is called kiosk. On this computer we've changed the background to this particular picture and we uh, just put three different folders to show you the settings and to show you folders. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the start page and then I am going to sign out. So I'm going to log out. Again, whenever you're dealing with the Windows world, if you want to make sure that configurations stick, logging in and logging out is the best way to do it. Whenever you log out and log back in, you make sure that all the configurations kind of stick. So we're at Windows 8. Now what I'm going to go do is go to Windows computer 8 number 2. So this is a different computer. This is a different computer. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as user 3. And this is going out and this is now pulling the information from that folder that's sitting on the server. So when I go to desktop, look at that. So I have test 1, test 2, test 3, and I have the background picture. So see, 
Look how easy that is for that roaming profile. So basically, those folders that you created are sitting there. The background is sitting there. You have all of that information, all of those set settings at your fingertips to make your life a lot easier. So, so roaming profiles really, 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 really are a good thing. Now, the only th reasons that roaming profiles might not be a good thing are for two, two reasons. Again, we keep doing a lot of these hacking classes, these penetration testing classes. And so one of the things that you need to be thinking about with roaming profiles comes from the security perspective. The reason being is that the local computer caches the roaming profile whenever you log in. So if you log into the computer, it will cache that information, files, folders, settings onto that local computer. The reason being is that if that computer loses the network connection, the next time you log in, it will use the cached profile it has, so it doesn't necessarily have to go out to that server. Well, since that information is cached, that means a hacker could come in, try to compromise that computer, and see what files and folders you have. If you're some call center employee, that's probably no big deal. Who cares? Whoopee woo. Uh, but if you're using ro roaming profiles for executive level staff, if some hacker is able to get in and see things like salary charts or some kind of trade secret, that could be a very bad deal. So the one reason roaming profiles might be a bad idea is because since it caches that information, it can become a hacking vector. The other reason is that when you cache that data, you may run out of storage space on your computer. So again, you, that local computer is caching the data locally, and so whenever it does, it does that, the profiles start to take up space on the hard drive. Now with modern hard drives with one terabyte of storage space, it shouldn't be any big deal, but it could be a big deal. You may run into problems with storage space when you start using these roaming profiles. So those are some of the things that you should think about. So the roaming profiles allows you to sit down at any computer on the network and you will get your files, your folders, your configurations, all of that. Um, the thing it doesn't do is it doesn't migrate the applications. There's a lot of good reasons to use this. Is This is an incredibly valuable, easy to use tool that far too many people don't use in the real world and I don't know why. So as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. This class was setting up roaming profiles in Windows Server 2012. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.